Welcome to Kinzer's Cube. Today we're covering some advanced bar tools. This episode is part of our Bar Basics series, so for more info, check the links below. These tools could help you raise the bar. What are we waiting for? Let's get started. John J. Daly invented the first pour spout in 1963. Before that, bartenders just kept the tops on the bottles. <sighs> Anytime, pretty boy. Okay, well, maybe I'm not Wolverine, but I am a big fan of the speed pour as a bar essential. Why? Well, it's simple. Not only can you color code them, depending on whether you have citrus or syrup or spirits, they also come in eight different types of speed pours and different variations of speed. But I always opt for the standard metal one. This pours at about an ounce a second and is great at reducing waste. It's also great at achieving exact measurements with control. Now, when you're done with your bottle, make sure you put the cap on your speed pour. It's kind of hard to find a substitution for a speed pour, but depending on where you buy your liquor and what liquor you buy, in some bottles, there will be a spill guard. Now, spill guards are great for slowing your pour rate, all while reducing spill. In 1934, Alfred H. Ackerson was granted a U.S. patent for ice cube tongs. This invention focuses on the tongs that handle ice cubes, sugar cubes, and nuts. Let me see that tong, that tong to tong tong tong. That was the tong song by Garnish. Well, not only does using tongs look amazing when preparing drinks, minimizing the spread of germs and bacteria is the huge win here. Now, when it comes to garnish tongs, they're great for pretty much all garnishes. But with the ice tong, they're especially good at handling large ice cubes. But when it comes to substitutes for tongs, the kitchen tong. Dun, dun, dun. I know, they may not look that great, but they are so effective. Their range is wide. Whoa! The first atomizer appeared in the mid-1850s thanks to Dr. Thomas DeVille Bliss from Toledo, Ohio. The atomizer was key in helping administer throat medicine. Atomizers were later used at the bar to spray vermouth into martinis. Bum, bum, ba -dum, bum, ba -dum. <laughs> I love atomizers, and for good reason. I've heard a lot of people discount atomizers, but the reason I love them is simple. Less waste, max efficiency. You can fill them with everything from vermouth, bitters, mezcal, even absinthe, to high proof spirits that are flammable. You can add a flavorful mist to any cocktail before or after its creation by simply spraying the glass before you put the cocktail in or even on top of a finished cocktail. But what if you don't have an atomizer? Well, that's okay, because there is a substitute, but it looks as ridiculous as it sounds. Behold, the spray bottle for spraying your plants or disciplining your cats. It's effective. The Lewis bag was originally used by banks to transport coins, but in the 19th century, bartenders adopted the bag to create crushed ice for cocktails. When the ice breaks into pieces so small, but you're not here to help me drink it all. Okay, maybe this is not based off of Lewis Capaldi, but it is called the Lewis Bag. Wow, is it a fun time. It's also a sanitary way to make crushed ice or even shaved ice without a refrigerator or ice machine. But what if you don't have a Lewis Bag? That's okay. Some modern substitutions would be a refrigerator that makes crushed ice, or an ice machine itself. Or you can just take one of those bags from the gas station that you get with ice in it, whack that a few times before you throw that in the freezer. Yeah. Mallets have been around since the days of the Romans and Egyptians and have been used by everyone from boat builders and stonemasons to bartenders. So, who's ready to get hammered? I love a good mallet. That's why I choose the Schmallet by Cocktail Kingdom. 
it's cheap and it's easy to use. My biggest piece of advice for this is to find a solid and steady surface to pound upon because if you don't have one of those, everything will shake and you might break something. But say you don't have a surface like that. You could take the Lewis bag or whatever bag you're using and hold it off to the side. Whoa. <laughs> but what if you don't have the trusty Schmallen? That's okay. Head to the kitchen and grab that extra long trusty rolling pin. Or you can use that extra large cocktail muddler by once again, Cocktail Kingdom. Yeah. Either way, wood or industrial plastic is better than metal. You don't want to tear that bag. Is there anything I can do, Your Highness? Yeah. Baby, you're a mystery. Do you wanna grab a drink with me? I'll even let you sit for free. Maybe you like for me. Yeah.